Now I'm joined by the mayor of San Antonio, Ron Nirenberg. Thanks so much for, for coming to join me here. Great to join you, Ron. So first off, you know, we're in Texas. This is a COVID hotspot. So the first question I want to ask is, you know, how are you, the people around you, and your constituents doing? Well, we're working very hard. You know, our, our mode of operation here is to make sure that our public has access to the medical professionals, the information and data that they need to protect themselves and their families. And, um, you know, we are working very hard to continue to vaccinate as many people as possible uh, and encourage and mandate mask wearing, uh, particularly in schools, uh, where we've had a little bit of a challenge with our, our governor and the state government uh, challenging us on, on our ability to do that. Yeah. And, and speaking of that, you know, what, what specifically has Governor Abbott done to you know, prevent your efforts to keep people safe? Well, we argue that he's used his emergency powers unconstitutionally to bind the hands of local government officials, uh, school districts, public health authorities from doing what they need to do to mitigate uh, this disaster in accordance with the CDC protocols and guidelines that we know uh, will help uh, save lives and protect communities. So we are fighting them in court. At the same time, uh, we're putting out the information uh, and guidance that people need to protect themselves. Now, obviously, a big part of this effort, you know, pushing back against these Republican governors has taken place at uh, the school district level. Um, so what has the San Antonio Independent School District been able to accomplish, you know, in terms of doing what they can to keep their students safe? Uh, well, I applaud the San Antonio Independent School District. They have recently become one of the first school districts and, and certainly one of the largest uh, to mandate mask wearing, uh, but also vaccines uh, for their staff. And they've put in place a, a mandatory mask requirement for all student staff and teachers as well. So they are taking a leadership position. The challenge here in San Antonio is that we have 17 large school districts. So the authority of our public health uh, professionals, uh, by virtue of directives that they can put in place for all schools is extremely important, and that's why we're in court. Does it look like those efforts are going to ultimately play out in your favor? Does it seem like Governor Abbott is going to try to continue to push back against them, or does he seem to be kind of relenting when it comes to at least the school districts? Well, he's not He's not relenting, unfortunately, but we have one, you now two uh, favorable court rulings that have um, put a stop to his orders. They are appealing to the state courts. Uh, but right now we have a directive in place that is lawful, uh, that has the, the weight of the law. Uh, we also know recently that um, actually as of yesterday, there was a federal court case filed on behalf of disabled students in Texas uh, to help also uh, prevent the governor from binding the hands of local health authorities and teachers from doing the right thing. And obviously we saw in Paris, Texas, their independent school district had kind of found a loophole to to institute the mask policy as part of their dress code, and uh, and they've been successful with that as well. So I mean, it's good to see these uh, you know staff and faculty members kind of pushing back against the politicization of this entire process and focusing on what's important, which has somehow you know escaped us throughout this thing, which is just keeping people alive. Yeah, and, and confusion and chaos is the enemy of this pandemic response. But the truth is. Um, the science has not changed. Masks work, vaccines work. That's why people need to use them if they want to put an end to this pandemic. All the legal battles and the mixed messaging that's coming from some elected officials, we need to keep in mind what the public health authority has been saying all along has not changed. Mask up, vax up. Well said. Um, I do want to talk about the ICU bed situation. How does that look in San Antonio? We are, like every other community in Texas, struggling because our hospital system, our medical system, has reached uh, the point where it's beyond its limits. And so we have been asking for supplementary nurse contingents, which are now coming into uh, the, the state of Texas. Uh, but we have reached a point where this COVID surge with the Delta variant it has accelerated far faster uh, than our medical system is capable of handling. And so we've got to do everything we can to slow that down. And that means for people who are vaccinated, who may potentially carry the virus and not get sick. Uh, we've got to make sure that they're aware of this as well and have a role to play in terms of masking up. So uh, it's it's a difficult situation. ICUs is where we see it redline the most, uh, but we've got to make sure that we have medical capacity available, not just for COVID, but for all of the myriad reasons uh, that our medical community is able to protect people. Now, obviously, some more grim element of this is that we're seeing a rise in hospitalizations for children Amid this surge, have you seen 
any type of a softening of Republican rhetoric when it comes to the virus now that you know kids are at risk, which was something that wasn't happening prior to the Delta variant coming coming into into being. You know, th there are uh, some leaders who exhibit uh, tremendous courage in the face of uh, their partisan expectations, and we've seen that. Unfortunately, it's a, a rare example. Uh, and, and you know, the, someone said the other day, "There's a reason why." book Profiles and Courage is a short book. Uh, we wish we had more examples of Republicans standing up and saying, you know what, enough is enough. Our goal should be united regardless of party, and that is to protect the health and safety and lives of our community members. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in the case of you know state leaders in Texas, uh, such as our governor, our attorney general, their rhetoric has only, has only gotten harder uh, and, and, and more uh, divisive. And, and that's why we're, again, putting it out there that uh, what, the, what the science is telling us has not changed. Mask up, backs up, this should, not, should, this should not be a political issue. Listen to medical authorities, listen to the public health authorities, and let's protect each other and save our own lives. Yeah, it's a testament to what happens, you know, when your elected officials are pandering more toward, you know, a Fox News audience as opposed to the health and safety of, you know, their own constituents. So I do want to switch gears here and talk about the Build Back Better agenda. Obviously, that's why I'm here in San Antonio. We have the Build Back Better bus tour happening with the American Rescue Plan and now soon with the American Jobs and Families Plan uh, getting ready to pass, make their way through Congress and, and get signed into law. What kind of a tangible impact will that have in a place like San Antonio? Well, we, we are excited about the prospects because the Build Back Better plan is about investing in communities, it's about restoring infrastructure, it's about creating access to jobs, it's about removing barriers that exist for people to achieve their potential in this, in this community and across the country. And for us, it's fundamental. And we recognize the fact that when this pandemic began and you saw the images of the food bank lines, thousands of people lined up for assistance. Yeah. Those images were coming from San Antonio, but they represented the entire country. At that point, we dedicated ourselves not to going back to normal, because that was the condition for millions of American families prior to the pandemic. What we had to do was come back stronger, more equitable, more resilient, and that's what the Build Back Better agenda is all about. The infrastructure plan, the jobs plan, and now the families plan, which is going to be doubling down on ensuring people have access to economic mobility. That's what we're doing here in San Antonio and will help us to advance our efforts and expand it community-wide. Now, prior to this reconciliation bill passing, which will be the basis for the American Families Plan, soft infrastructure, we already have the hard infrastructure plan that's passed to the Senate. That was the biggest hurdle. It's a done deal, basically. What does that look like uh, in, you know, in San Antonio? Well, we know that for you know, 30 years, perhaps, um, you know, infrastructure plan, investments in American infrastructure and local communities was almost a running joke in Congress. So the, uh, the vision to actually deliver for local communities at a crisis moment was very important. So that means improved bridges, roads, uh, public transportation infrastructure, uh, the opportunity to invest in parks in a community that needs access to, to recreation and green space. All these things now will be enabled because we are leveraging our local dollars in our ability to work on these things with a, an investment from our, our partners at the federal level. That would suggest that Infrastructure Week was uh, was reduced to a punchline. Is that what you're uh, is that what you're implying here? Infrastructure <laughs> Week was our favorite week in yeah, DC, yeah. uh, but we're finally going to see that come to fruition. Great. Well, um, I'll, I'll end with this. You know. The point of this tour is kind of learning from our past mistakes in terms of messaging, obviously, during the Obama administration. A lot was done legislatively, but not so much on the messaging front. And that kind of allowed Republicans to fill that vacuum with disinformation and misinformation. So if there's one final message that you want to impart to people watching and listening about, you know, the entirety of the Build Back Better agenda, American Rescue Plan, Jobs Plan, and Families Plan, uh, what would that be? I would ask folks to remember what we felt when we saw the images of the pandemic first play out in, across the pages of, of America's newspapers and the fact that we dedicated ourselves and committed ourselves then to come back from this stronger, that we can't go back to the same old normal, that we would build a, a nation that is stronger, more equitable, and more resilient. That's what the Build Back Better agenda is all about. That's what our vision for America is all about. And it's uniting every city in this country. Great. Well said. Well, Mayor Nuremberg, thank you so much for, for sitting down and talking. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming, brother.